A big shift takes place in the book of Obadiah at verse 15. 1 to 14 has all been oracle against Edom. In verse 15, this judgment is expanded from Edom to all nations. And this idea is actually kind of built into the name of Edom itself. So here is Edom in the Hebrew, Edom, um, Aleph Dalet Main. And uh, these um, Hebrew letters are the same Hebrew letters used um, for the name Adam or man or humanity, Adam. And we see this parallel relationship in the prophets as well between Edom and the nations, uh, most prominently in the last chapter of Amos. Amos chapter 9, take a look at this. Um, the booth of David, it is said in verse 12, will possess the remnant of Edom and all nations. Edom and all nations are placed side by side. And so Obadiah says that the day of Yahweh is near upon all nations. For as you, Edom, drunk on my holy mountain, so on the day of Yahweh, all nations will drink, implied on my mountain. Now, what is this talking about? Well, as Edom attacked and plundered Jerusalem, as they, they drank the sweet wine of stolen wealth, so um, on the day of Yahweh, all nations will attack Jerusalem and plunder its um, wealth. And we see this, it seems like we're always going back to Zechariah 14. We see this in that chapter as well. Take a look at this. All nations gathering against Jerusalem. I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. They will take spoil from you. Think drinking the wine. Um, cities will be taken. Houses plundered. Half of the city will go out to exile, but the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city for Yahweh will go out to fight against those nations when he comes with all of his holy ones. And when he does come, it will be as though those nations had never been. They will be defeated like that. Now, did you catch that line from Zechariah 14, which we just read? Um, the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. I think that is what Obadiah is describing in verse 17, the remnant in Zion, where he says that in Zion, there will be those who escape, who escape this attack by all nations when they come to drink the spoil of Jerusalem. And um, this remnant of the house of Jacob will be supernaturally empowered to fight back against their adversaries, and they will consume their attackers, and it seems as if Edom will be among those attackers. And when there is uh, no one left to threaten Jerusalem, um, Zion will be called holy. It will be holy again. The, the, the times of the Gentiles will be fully and officially over. No one left to trample over the city. And on that day, the kingdom will be restored to Israel. I love this line. In verse 17, it says that the exiles of the army of the people of Israel will return to the land and possess her possessions. Now, this word possess, it's a yarash. It's an important word for the conclusion of the book of Obadiah. Let's look at those concluding lines. Obadiah 19. Look at these last Lines. The house of Jacob will possess their own possessions. And of course, their own possessions are referring to their own land, the land of Ephraim, the land of Samaria and of Gilead. But they will also possess their neighbors as well, the land of the Philistine, the land of the Canaanites. And um, Israel will possess Mount Esau, possess Edom as well. And this this is an image of the, the ever-expanding kingdom of Israel over all nations under the Messiah. Remember from Isaiah 9, um, verse 6 and 7, For to us a child is born, and the increase of his government will see no end. 
Um, it seems as if, as if Obadiah has snuck in a little bit of messianic prophecy in these final lines. Take a look at this chart, which tries to trace that messianic prophecy connected to this word uh, possess, yarash, in the final verses of Obadiah. Look at this chart. Um, this is a chart that's adapted from a uh, scholar, Tim Mackey, and we got to go back to the book of Genesis to trace this theme, where Rebecca, who is the mother both of Jacob and of Esau, um, it is promised to her that her offspring, her seed, will possess Yarash, possess the gate of those who hate him. Now, who is it that hates the seed of Rebecca? Who is it but Edom? Um, the Balaam prophecy in Numbers 24 is going to focus in on this seed. Um, his, the seed, the king, the star, the scepter. He will crush the forehead of Moab. Does that kind of sound a little bit like Genesis 3? Crush the head of the serpent? This Messiah figure, he will crush the head of Moab and he will possess Edom. Look at that. Um, we already read this line from Amos, but let me point out now that the book of Amos comes right before Obadiah in the book of the 12. So there's an intentional relationship between those books. And in the final lines of Amos, right before Obadiah starts, it says that the, the fallen booth of David will rise again, and he, um, the Messiah, will possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations who are called by my name. And then Obadiah is going to bring it all together, reminding us that even after the defeat of Jerusalem and its plundering by the Edomites, that Esau, that Edom, must fall before the kingdom of God can be established, but that the Messiah, he will rule over Mount Esau. Now, who, I ask you, who is the only king of Israel to fully uh, possess and to uh, rule over the nation of Edom? Well, it is King David. Look again at this map. Um, the, the full extent of the kingdom under David and Solomon. It included Ammon, Moab, and Edom. Now, one day, one day, the kingdom will be restored to uh, a seed from the line of David who will crush the head of Moab and rule over Mount um, Esau. 